Praise the Lord. Welcome viewers to the, today's Bible teaching. This is Reverend Esther, Oasis Hour. Bring you welcome again, once again, uh, to tonight's teaching. And uh, we have such an exciting uh, Bible uh, teaching for tonight, which says God's mercy, God's mercy. I'm so eager to share this with the viewers. And even my humble self, I really want to learn tonight what God's mercy is. We keep calling God's mercy. We just want to know how God's mercy came about. Bless you all. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for all this hour. And uh, we have always our sukkah in you. The Bible said, uh, We that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we thank the Lord so much for his um, grace and that mercy that we're going to speak about for tonight. And we invite God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to come stay by us. Thank you, Father, because you let the presence of the Holy Spirit to surround and saturate us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It gladdens, you know, the hearts of David when he said, let us go to the house of God and worship the Lord. So, brethren, sit right back with me, get your pen and paper. Let's see what we can share tonight regarding our God's mercy, the areas and the topic. We are going to hit the notes tonight and see how God is going to give us the enlightenment regarding those areas. Thank you. So, the main text for today is uh, Hebrew chapter 4, verse uh, 16. It says, Let us all therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the help in the time of need. We should all come today and onto the uh, throne of grace where we're supposed to obtain God's mercy. And if you define what God's mercy is all about, uh, it's telling you literally, it's a he shall have a judgment without mercy that has showed mercy and mercy that we shall rejoice in it. You know, James uh, 2, 13, it talks about how the kingdom of God is going to come and how the Lord is going to meet out his judgment. And when you hear the name judgment, when you hear the uh, uh, judge, and when you hear going into the courtroom for a particular judgment, in your mind for the, um, uh, the, the convict, for somebody who is a, a great, a, a, a heinous uh, offender, the only thing that comes to the mind of that person is that, oh Lord, how can I have mercy in this case? Are you sure the judge is going to have mercy on this case? Because really, really, I, I am guilty of the crime. So if you see this person or this um, individual in their mind, even though they didn't speak to their lawyer, what's in their mind, but they keep saying, God, can I, are you sure I'm going to have God's mercy on this particular judgment? So that's why our text today is saying, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need in Hebrew chapter 4 verse 16. So straight on, we are going to go straight into the fundamentals. When I mean fundamentals, I'm talking about the days of our ancestors. Our ancestors, you know, uh, literally, they, was, they stuck to uh, the teaching of the Old Testament where they said for the remission of sin, for forgiveness of particular of sin or iniquity, go get a, a ram, get a dove, get a turtle. But we were not in this generation, this dispensation of Jesus Christ, don't depend on those sins. Christ himself sacrificially went to the cross of Calvary so that he can sacrifice himself for you and myself and for our family. But guess what? The uh, ancestors never had that privilege in that time. So, but they either have to pay the consequences of their iniquity, especially if you love to uh, watch the uh, the Vatican's, if you will watch, love to watch this Roman uh, uh, movies, you know, where uh, they say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand, it means a corporal punishment that is given to a particular offender is to take up maybe one of the eyes off because you've committed you know a particular sin that they say oh it's a very heinous sin the only way we can do to rem to remedy 
this particular uh, 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 sin that you have committed is to chop off the hand or we take off your eyeballs or we uh, some cases some persons lost their life and there's no mercy then I guess maybe the jurors you know we call into the chambers and they ask them uh, if we continue this way to be taking an eye for an eye a tooth for the tooth then I don't think we're gonna have people to procreate here on earth because it's like okay the moment you go to steal then we're gonna kill you we're gonna behead you and you have watched videos where you know um, they have to pay back for to a particular offender and they take off their hair so today we're going to talk about how it relates to our fundamentals how it relates to our ancestors and how it relates to where we are inherited from where we're coming from in particularly you understand so and it's talking about uh god's mercy and the sins of our ancestors God's mercy and the sins of our ancestors. So if we want to quickly look up onto some of these uh, uh, texts that I have here for tonight, it's going to tell you about, you know, how the Bible said in Genesis chapter 6 that he has made man. You can take it from 2 to 3. And he said he has made man, but God started regretting right away how he made man because he felt that, you know, uh, Cain betrayed him. Just like uh, Eve betrayed him. So, uh, literally, God was like, hey, Cain, where is your brother? And Cain told God, I am not my brother's keeper. Because Cain already is guilty of charge. In that moment, I feel Cain was one of our ancestors. It does not, it does not matter what race, what background, what color, or who you are, or what personality, or what kind of class of maybe um, uh, the rich, wealthy, or, or it doesn't really, you know, connote that way. What really matters is you as a human being. So if God was going to take Cain to his judgment and courtroom, what was going to be his punishment? Though the Bible mentioned that he was going to have, he's going to become a fugitive. And he's going to be punished for his uh, uh, what his offense because he killed his brother, Bill. So now there was a problem. But today we're going to talk about the mercy on its own, literally. If you, I'm going to ask you, the audience, what's the meaning of mercy? You, uh, I'm going to be having different kinds of definition. I'm going to be having, some people might tell me, Oh, Sister Esther, you know what? God's mercy is when maybe I commit a sin and then the judge and the jury decide to forgive me. And those ones that I offended decide to forgive me. I've seen persons where they kill one of their family members and the only thing, maybe this family member that they actually, you know, that they were offended will say, you know what? I forgive you. That's the only way they can remedy, you know, the whole situation and be very, be at peace in their mind. So today, when we go look to uh, uh, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of God's grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And find grace to help in time of need. So, brethren, if you are going to kneel down and pray, uh, my teacher, you know, in the deliverance grant used to tell me that first of all, you're going to ask God to forgive your ancestors. Because you came from somewhere. You don't just show up that way. You don't just show up. I'm going to ask you, what's the name of your great-grandfather? You tell me what's the name. You're going to be tell me maybe the name of your grandfather is Atkins. You say, oh, Mr. Atkins. So what's the name of your great-grandfather again? So yeah, it is Atkins. Oh, really? The Atkins. So the Atkins. Oh, you're welcome to the podium. And so the Atkins... Uh, what are the differential diagnosis or distinctive character that we can know about the Atkins? It's okay, yeah. The Atkins are hard workers. The Atkins stand for the truth. The Atkins are professionals. And the Atkins, what they do, they actually go out to reach out to the community to see who they can bless. So that's what the Atkins stands for. Oh, great job. So, but now, 
when I ask, so what about Mr. Brown? So what does Mr. Brown stand for? Oh, he said, well, Mr. Brown, they're very good with skillful thing. You know, the, the, the love business, the, the Browns don't like much of education, but they do very well when it comes to wealth. So that's what the Mr. Brown do. So they're very curious about what stage of life they have to get to. And then, of course, get themselves catapulted to the top. And then they become, you know, among the rich bourgeois. So, brethren, so tonight, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God's mercy and how it's supposed to sprang up right from the day of our ancestors. Why is it that the ancestor didn't have that mercy meted out to them before we today in this dispensation generation and probably maybe as the future it may be in about maybe a hundred years again we have to transfer the baton to another sets of generation and then they also have to think about how God's mercy rule in their life so and for us to actually know the origin of our ancestors and actually trace some kind of traits and character and some kind of behavior, we really need to make inquiries. And how do you make inquiries? You make inquiries, you go down to the grassroots, probably you travel down to the countryside, and then you ask your uncle, your auntie, auntie this, auntie that, uncle that, auntie this. So you ask them, so now in your generation, what happened? What did really happen to my grandfather? What kind of lifestyle was he leading? Was he a smoker, a womanizer? What does it do for a living? You really wanna know, okay, okay, what about my great grandmother? Who is she? What does she do for a living? Who is she? So, well, yeah, your grandma mother. So she was a dancer and then she danced very well. Then they tell you all kinds of things about your great grandmother. You say, really, that was it? So does it mean maybe when I have a child, one of them is going to take after my great grandmother? Oh, really? Then I'll start seeing the traits and the character and some of those things that I actually like and some of the ones that I don't like. Yes, yeah, so those are the things we're going to trace tonight. So when it comes to according to uh, Romans chapter 5 verse uh, 12, it says, whoever is, um, it says, whoever as by one man of sin enter into this world, and it came through Adam and Eve, and then through again another one man again, and then of course, when uh, Adam and Eve disobeyed the law, and then they threw us in a cup. But there's still one man again that came by, and then they get us released from problem. And then automatically we're able to stand to praise God. We had another check on second chance. And who is that man? The man is called Jesus Christ. So that's why today, the book of Romans, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin enter into the world, and say, and in Romans chapter uh, five verse nineteen say, also for as by one man disobedience, and many were made sinners. Many were made sinners. Now he said the uh, the righteous judgment of God would have been a summary, you know, some half of executions of sinners with a sword with eternal judgment. However, but guess what happened? The mercy of God sprang forth. The mercy of God just came by. And then when I ask you a simple question, how does the mercy of God came by? And who actually was, you know, this genesis of this mercy of God? And who was behind the mercy of God? And who was that? And then I'm going to tell you, he's the one that was mentioned in Isaiah chapter 53. And you can read it from 1 down to 10. And Jesus Christ emphasized and said, this person is going to be born into the world. A lot of people is going to be saved through him. The government is going to be on his shoulder. And then people are going to respect him very well. And then, of course, people are going to see he has authority. He has authority for deliverance, perfection. He knows how to heal. You can go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He's going to tell them all how. Those people who are bound and those people who are in captivity, he was able to release them. And so because of this obedience of this one person who allowed himself to be crucified upon the cross of Calvary, you and I uh, have a, a second chance again. Because if we're going to live by the days of our ancestors, which is Adam and Eve, we have no future at all. But because guess what? God came by and then of course, Jesus Christ, you know, came into existence. 
born of a woman, a virgin. Now, there's a lot of controversies regarding that era, but we're not ready to go into that era right now. But maybe that's going to be put for another day. But what I'm saying is that because of this single one person, and then of course, we were able to be delivered. Then salvation came to mind. And that was how you and I had the liberty. And then in any situations that doesn't really suit us very well, so we rebuke your Satan, any form of foul spirit that is hovering around within and around, we bind the activity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's how we're able to take an authority. So brethren, it gladdens my heart to present this message tonight regarding what they call God's mercy. And then it's a very, very, very detailed kind of message. It's a message that might not really finish maybe in two teachings in quick succession. But it has to maybe take maybe a couple of days or maybe three days for it to finish. But you know, it generally what, what fascinates me most to take uh, this particular topic regarding God's mercy. Because our ancestors, they struggle a lot. They went in search of what is going to really help their spiritual life. Now, if maybe their physical life was okay and they had a lot of uh, farm products, they weren't lacking any food. They had maybe cattle that transport them from one area to the other. So they didn't lack transportation. Maybe they had maybe a luxury of uh, uh, maybe money and they were doing that trade by butter. They could exchange one or two few things. And then, you know, it, it enabled them to touch to the wall. They can, you know, make transactions, you know, from one point A to point B and things go amicably and smoothly. But guess what? But they couldn't really figure out how the spiritual life had to be balanced so some of them have to do a lot of sacrifices and then you say sister so what kind of sacrifices do they do yeah some of them use have to sacrifice goats ham ram and all kinds of things and some of them you know whatever team may be the soothsayer or the herbalist or whoever that is the spiritual leader asks them to do that's what they do but guess what they really didn't, didn't, didn't they, they, they were not satisfied there was still a vacuum but you know what brethren i have to test five I am the uh, number one testimony. I can stand in between the gap to really tell you, tell you that since the day I gave my life to Christ, I was able to fill the void to ask who is that spiritual person to fill the void? Jesus Christ. It gladdens my heart. I'm very honorable, privileged to announce to you that Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 3 verse 16, came to fill the vacuum. In John chapter 1 verse 29, even uh, John the Baptist, who was in the wilderness, crying. He said, prepare ye the world because the Messiah is coming. He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. Also address this little lamb coming. He said, behold, look at the one coming because he is the deliverer of the world. So, but I wish in my mind, I used to ask questions. I said, why is it that Christ didn't come at the very beginning, but though he was there from the very beginning, I don't want to contradict myself. Go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. He's going to tell you literally who is that person because uh, if you want to turn with me to that particular uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, though that's not a teaching for tonight, and I don't want to digress or divert from the real teaching. I really want to talk about God's mercy and how our ancestors were supposed to tap into it. Because I'm going to, you know, try to round up the teaching and then we can go uh, into maybe a question and answer. If you have some questions, you can put it on the platform. And before we go ahead, try to subscribe and um, uh, hit the notification button and share and subscribe, please. And put on your questions. If you have any question, you say, sister, sister, but I don't understand. You're talking about God's mercy. You're talking about our ancestors. You're also talking about the deliverer of the world and how through one uh, obe disobedience somebody, uh, uh, judgment were passed into the earth and how through obedience of one person, and we have God's grace and mercy. And then mercy was able to rule. And then uh, my question personally as a teacher, I'm asking and I say, why is it that Christ and you know, in the days of our ancestors, didn't come to the rescue of our ancestor. Why were they dabbling into so many things before they go to find who was the real, you know, uh, deliverer, who was the real salvation? But if you read with me here, it's still and it's boiling down that Christ was actually there from the very beginning. He said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, in, in the earth was without form and void. And he said, darkness was upon the face 
of the deep. And they say the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So it means Christ was there, and then you can go to uh, 1 John chapter 1, 2, and verse 1, and then 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And then how God was able to deliver us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Now, our ancestors, you know, we're living in a dark age, in a stone age, before the AD, before the BC, and then they were dabbling into so many things in quest of maybe what's going to give them peace of mind and what's, what's going to give, keep their sanity and what's going to keep them calm spiritually. So they dabble so, in so many things. And who are we in this generation to judge them? And who are we to ask if they have their salvation? And who are we to say if they were really saved? And they were sitting on the right hand of God. And the great advocate who is Jesus Christ is advocating for them and, and us. Who are we to say? We, we, we can't say. And so that's why God's mercy came into being. And I, and I really, really want to talk much about this God's mercy. So in this God's mercy that we are speaking of tonight, it displays a lot of so many things. There were a lot of presumption sins. There were a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, questions in the hearts of people and people were either taking God's mercy for granted or grace for granted because Paul emphasized to the, uh, the children of Galatians, to the church, and I said, would you mind continuing in sin and then the grace as all, he put this statement, he made this phrase like this, he said, would you continue in sin and let the grace of God abound? And I guess some people like me would say, no, because you never know. The devil come to still kill and destroy, John 10, 10, but Christ came to give eternal life. So if you are left into the discretion of Satan, I bet you give you a few days, either he kill you physically or spiritually, in all the ways. It doesn't take the devil a snap of a finger to strike. So, but guess what? I pray that prophetically, as we speak about God's mercy tonight, God's mercy, it brings about unmerited divine God's will. You can go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. That's what God's mercy tells us about. And then God's mercy, uh, if you go to Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 to 25, it still tells you more. And I love that scripture because it correlates with what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. And then it goes to uh, Job 22, verse uh, Job 22, verse uh, 27 down to 31. And then it talks about it's subject as a human being. It's a human being they love to manipulate things. Paradventure in the old, in the past, in the Stone Age. Maybe uh, some of the soothsayers, uh, the fortune tellers, the harbalists, you know, the, the voodooers. They were really deceiving the people. Oh, if you do this, it's going to be corrected. Why don't you get a turtle? It's going to be corrected. Bring a goat, it's going to be corrected. Get the chicken, it's going to be corrected. Go to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 10, verse 18 to 19. It's going to tell you more. It said, I wouldn't want to want my family to go through the fire, my children to go through the fire for the second time. The moment, I want to make something very clear before I close tonight. The moment, the moment, the moment any man or any woman visits the Habalis, go to the voodoo, visit the, 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 um, the, the evil uh, platform, you are rededicating your family or your children into the altar of Satan to be born again. To, <laughs> listen to me, not born again as, as in Jesus Christ said, to be born in the real fire. You're going to say, sister, so really? You mean if I go to visit uh, the palm reader, if I go to visit the voodoo people, if I go to visit the, the soothsayer and the fortune teller, you mean I make my children to be born in fire uh, as a literal fire? Oh, okay. Well, try it and see. If you go to the voodoo people, guess what happened? They exchange your star. They steal your star. If they do not steal the star of the children, they steal your own star because they can see. They have four eyes to see. And that's another teaching for another day for deliverance purposes. But guess what? If you, uh, if you keep visiting those places, you are endangering even the unborn children. So, brethren, the one that our ancestors have done, they have put us into many trouble. We're still struggling to get ourselves out of it. Not to talk, talk about the one that our parents did, the one would do against the children that is still in, in a holding a kind of a stronghold upon the, uh, the, the family. Brethren, I will still come back again to the topic. The topic said, God's mercy. And God's mercy talks about you and I responding to the cry 
of a broken soul a broken soul that needs help if you go to mark chapter 10 verse 46 and 52 god's mercy talks about a broken soul and a soul that needs uh, a soul that needs to be fed a soul that needs to occupy its void a soul that needs god's grace a soul that needs open heaven a soul that needs divine connection. A soul that is empty, that is in quest and search of God everywhere in the mountain sea, go to the land, travel through any kinds of country. No, this soul needs the word of God. The seer needs the Holy Spirit. The soul needs God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's what our ancestors lack. And that's the kind of corporal punishment they were meted in into by dabbling into things they were not so told, supposed to dabble. And I bet you, the Bible said, I will visit the sin of the great grandfather into the fourth generation. We don't want that. And I pray that God is going to redeem us from such evil cause in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, uh, our most highlight for today is that we beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable and the first service. That's the first service. That's the first service. I'm not saying when you go to the four wall of the church, it's not a service. Because the Bible says we should not forsake the garden of a student, which is proper, is still okay. But the real first service that God is expects of you and I is our body. If we cannot keep this body to obey God, to, to follow the dictates of God and to follow the direction of God, then we'll lose it all. Then we have not really, really fulfilled that calling that God calls us unto. You don't necessarily mean has to be a pastor, reverend, a bishop, a teacher, an apostle. No, but the first service to God is your body. Respect the body. And that's why the book of James and also told us, it says James 7, 2, you can go to that place. And also uh, Hebrew 13, 4, you know, he said, if you know you cannot stay, get married get somebody if you're a man get a wife if you're a, wo a woman get a husband and god does not believe in premarital sex or maybe a boyfriend a girlfriend and then you say it's all no it's all the same it's okay in the old testament that's oh yeah it's okay everything goes no everything does not go so please and uh, that's how only way god mercy can locate you god mercy locate you through his obedience god mercy Locate through his willing, willingness, God mercy locate through through his uh, consistency in his studying and, uh, and worshiping in spirit and the truth, and God mercy locates you through researching, inquiry, making God first number one, according to Matthew chapter six verse thirty three. But I'm going to stop here for tonight as we continue God's mercy and then the quest of our ancestors and how they were trying to see and find who is the salvation and who is that deliverer and who is that person that's supposed to deliver the word they're talking about because they have gone through hard times it was not really easy a journey of maybe one day it took them a 400 years it took them a 40 years and that was not cool by the time you take a crunch of a 40 years out of a man's life the man is already done so i pray that tonight that we should realize that fact that we need god's mercy we need his obedience to walk aright and make a point in life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so brother I'm gonna to come to the end of this teaching It's a long teaching it's a long topic I can't just teach it teach the whole teaching for tonight's section in the whole day and I don't think so I don't think I'm gonna finish it in one section so but anyway for the little I've taught I pray that the Holy Spirit God the Father please dwell on your children the viewers the listeners that this mercy of God will literally touch their life in the mighty name of Jesus so brother in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we thank the Lord because of His mercies, and we thank the Lord because He said, "I will, He said, I will have mercy on who I'm supposed to have mercy upon." It is, it is mentioned in the Old Testament. It is also mentioned in the Book of Hebrew and Roman, and so also it is being mentioned again, you know, uh, in in the Book of Second uh, uh, Corinthians. It is said, um, uh, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. It was, it is all mentioned there too. How love cover it everything brethren thank you so much please i want you to quickly share subscribe to this uh, uh platform the oasis family are uh, actually praying for you and they are interceding for uh for the community their family they're literally interceding for the world because you can see what's going on in the world today and i pray that none of us shall fall victim of this in the mighty name of jesus christ it is well with you it is well with your family in the mighty name of jesus christ 
God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because we've come to the end of this meeting. For tonight, we thank you for this teaching. Thank you for the understanding. Thank you because of uh, what you've done for us, mightily. I pray as uh, we are about to go for work tomorrow, Monday, in every where we are. Some people is already day. Some people, is, some people is already night. Some people is already morning. I pray that you should help them, that God's mercy should follow them to their place of work, their home, their residence, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you've had a prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God, prepare me. A sanctuary. Pure and holy. Amen. Try them true.